Hello and welcome to the Drivers Hub. My name is Bhavneet Vaswani and you're watching an episode of Auto Culture. Today I am reviewing an Abba. Hold up. This is the wrong Abba. But let me tell you one thing. You cannot mention an Abba without the Polo, the king of the streets. But in the INRC Championship, the Polo is everywhere. However, on the streets, the Polo has always had to deal with a lurking apex predator, which is the Abba, which was more fun more engaging and emphasis more powerful we have driven a few rally cars in the past too to be exact and both of them were polos now if you didn't already know the polo used to compete in the world rally championship and also won the championship for manufacturers from 2013 to 2016 but the punto abat also has some rally heritage as fiat ran the abat grande punto in the italian rally championship and won 7 out of the 11 races of the program We've seen Polos running in the INRC Championship and dominated, but the Abarth from factory comes with a bigger advantage, with more ground clearance, bigger displacement, and most importantly, more power. Which makes me wonder, why is no one building a Punto Abarth for the INRC Championship? The boys at Ideal Racing had pretty much the exact same idea, and this is what they came up with: a rally spec Abarth catered to the INRC2 Championship to bring the fight straight into the Polos' backyard. How is it? Let's find out. According to the INRC2 rule book there is not much that you can do to gain an advantage from the bodywork of the car so the car still looks pretty much exactly the same same bumpers same on the side same on the rear but there are a couple of uh, differences to the normal car like these hood vents now you've got a hood latch so that it's easier to open the engine and now you're running on rally spec wheels that are pretty much the toughest thing that you can use on the INRC2 Spectrum You've also got Brembo rotors and EBC yellow stuff pads for that extra braking power, and the ride height has been increased thanks to that same INRC2 spec suspension, which is very very expensive. You've also got a roof scoop that allows some ventilation into the cabin for the drivers, and that's pretty much it in terms of the exterior. Oh, and how can I forget this really cool livery that I quite enjoy. What lurks under this beast is the exact same 1.4 T-jet that you and I are very familiar with. It's pretty much a stage two setup now with an intercooler that is as big as INRC2 allows. You've also got a waste gate, and you have a OEM replacement BMC air filter that is a cotton filter, so it can handle the dust that comes in a rally stage two. Now. It pushes around 190 bhp and 250 to 160 newton meters of torque, which is a massive bump in that INRC2 category, which is basically the biggest advantage that this car has, and that's what I'm very excited to drive about. And uh, when you can see a little bit more in detail, you can also see the Riger suspension uh, adjustment uh, knobs right here, so that you can just open the hood, adjust the suspension, no problem at all. and you will also see a couple of bits of paint here and there those are the codes of grading that INRC actually uh, uses to figure out if what is good what is bad and we don't know what these colors actually mean only FMSCI does and uh, you will see them on the turbo you will see them on the head you will see them near the firewall so that's the way of them basically regulating everything and these zip ties over here that are metallic are also done by FMSCI so that if you ever need to do any changes over here which is not allowed you have to apply to FMSCI tell them what is wrong and why do you need to replace that part and then they will scrutinize it all over again so yes underneath it's very strict and the power gains 
aren't that loosely gained in INRC2 because it is a very strict category. So the competition is very high and a lot of people will try and find as many loopholes to find out where can they gain an advantage, which is why everything is just locked and you cannot do anything in your garage. Uh, every time I get into a rally car, every year, I always feel older than I am. So, back again to struggle into entering this rally car. As you would imagine, it's a very committed position, not much to move. These OMP racing seats hold you in place, whatever may come. And you've also got a deep dish rally steering wheel with you. Now you've also got a different ignition uh, sequence, so you need to switch on the ignition, switch on the ECU, and then start the car and then put the fan on, which is a regulation in INRC2. FMSCI also provides you with this little box over here that is an SOS box, so if you are in trouble, you can just click the SOS switch. And if you've had a crash and you press the green button, you can basically tell them that you're okay. Now, it is very loud inside this cabin when the car is moving, so the drivers have a comm system so that they can speak to their co-driver and it's connected by this cable that connects to your helmet so yeah this is a pretty straightforward full spec rally car and i can't believe i'm gonna get to drive it so let's go do that life is all about growth and while everybody's rate of growth is different, us car guys have a very specific way of marking milestones in our lives and that is buying a car for ourselves. Now, why not buy yourself the car that you really want from the people that understand you as a car guy? Imagine you're welcoming a new member of the family into your house. You need something practical, smooth and reliable. Look no further than this 52k run second owner Q3. Possibly this could be one of the best deals in the Q3 market right now. Or you've just passed your entrance test with flying colors and dad has told you time to get your car for college. How about this? A one liter TSI Polo that is ready for you to put all the mods you want during college. This has only run 32,000 kilometers making it a very nice deal for a new driver. Now imagine you've finally gotten that promotion after years of work and it's time to get a brand new jazzy car for yourself. How about this? A VRS 230 with just 38,000 kilometers and in pristine condition. So if you're like me and you define the chapters of your life through the cars that you've owned, look no further than TDH Classifieds. Head on to thedriversup.com slash TDH Classifieds and get yourself the car of your dreams. As you can imagine, everything that would insulate the sound has been completely deleted because that's redundant weight. So the inside cabin is very loud. You still have an edge pattern but the gear ratios have become longer now. So you don't need to be moving around the gears a lot which means that you have much more leverage while sending it in a corner on a rally stage. Now, the remap complements for those longer gear, gear ratios. So, the car has a lot of oomph at the end, but the way the power is delivered is very linear. The throttle pedal though is super responsive, is as good as telepathic. Each and every millimeter of that pedal has so much feedback. The brakes too stamp on them and they stop. I am on racing slicks right now and they are not up to temperature at all. So I am going to be very very careful with how I stamp on those brakes because there is no ABS. 
and it is very very easy to lock this car the steering is pretty much the same rack and column that you would expect from a stock car but this OMP steering wheel makes it so easy to give a lot of direction change and back and when it is actually losing control it is losing its rear it is so easy to just add on a little bit of throttle and get that rear in check it's a fantastic car to drive the involvement that you would get from an abarth is still alive and how the suspension is as you would expect a 10 lakh rupee set to work it is absolutely fantastic ironing out the biggest of speed bumps you can ever think of it has been designed to take an actual real beating and you could imagine that oh my god why aren't cars having all of this suspension from factory well that's because the suspension setup is pretty much 4 lakhs more expensive than buying the car itself everything in this car is a ridiculous expense after every one or two rallies the suspension is completely removed and sent over for repairing which costs an additional 30,000 rupees it is a very expensive sport and when you look at it overall you are looking at around 50 lakh rupees for a season of INRC2 and that's a low ball figure so yes motorsport is the most expensive sport even off the road I cannot describe it to another car, but I can describe it to a bike. It feels like an old Duke 390. Do you have the balls for it? Then we'll do it. That's exactly what this car is. And it keeps making you feel so eager to push it and push it and push it. It's so ready. When you build a car to be a project, this feeling is exactly what you are trying to replicate on the streets but the moment you try to get this feeling you are so far away from a street car that it just becomes an absolute commitment for the road there is no form of sound dampening which means everything that was soft leathers and plastics and mattresses have become metal and all of that shakes your body through the inside out but if that's what you love, this is such a good feeling. seen the light and this car is honestly one of the most involving rewarding and pleasurable drives I've had in a very long time I don't know I'm actually lost for words as to how fun this car is so if you've enjoyed the video Thank you so much for watching. Check out Ideal Racing on Instagram. They have some really cool builds and they are trying to do quite a lot of Hutke stuff like this Rally Abarth. And I am really hoping that in the track sections, this will absolutely demolish that German hatchback that we all love. And on that bombshell, thank you so much for watching. It's been your boy Bhavneet. I am going to continue ripping this car because it's too much fun. <laughs>